For Red Film Radio, I'm Matt Micucci from the 2019 BFI London Film Festival, and I'm very pleased to be joined by director Michael Caton Joan. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. So, uh, well, you're presenting the film Our Ladies, uh, I should say, and uh, it's a very interesting film, and there's lots to talk about, and hopefully in the course of this interview we'll get to some of the really quite things that interested me the most about the film but just you know for the benefit of our listeners I guess uh, would you mind maybe introducing it saying a few words to just introduce it a little bit it's a uh, it's a story uh, set in 1996 uh, in Scotland Mm -hmm. and it's about uh, six teenage Catholic school girls who are in the school choir and they are they live in a town called Fort William up in the middle of nowhere and they are going to Edinburgh for the day for a singing com- competition they're less interested in the choir singing than they are in chasing boys and drinking and hanging out and getting into trouble basically mm-hmm. so it's uh, it's 24 hours in their life and it's um it's a story that uh, that was a novel uh written by Alan Warner called The Sopranos uh and it was something that I read and optioned 20 years ago. Mm. I've been trying to get it made for 20 years and only <laughs> succeeded in the last year. Well, I mean, I, I could probably guess the answer, but why did it take so long then to, to get it made? Well, I think, you know, back then there was, this is way before Me Too and, and Time's Up, and, uh, you know, back then there was very little interest in anybody making a film about young girls. Or women, particularly for that matter. Certainly not in Scotland. I think if it had been set in Buckinghamshire in a convent, I think it would have been made already. Um, I just think, it, you know, the, the the world caught up with this story. This story was out there for a long time, and it didn't really change. I wrote the script uh, in 1996 and pretty much shot what I wrote then. Um, really? Is that, is that? Yeah, this year I, I, I did this. Thing. I just shot what I had written then, and it was. And it's, it started off being a, a contemporary film, right. and by the time I got to make it, it was a period piece. You know. Uh, exactly. I was going to ask you about that because actually, well, you know, well, now that you said that, I kind of changed the piece the purpose mm-hmm. of a question. But I was going to ask you, be, this being a period piece, it felt like the the film was so immersed in the times back then. But I guess what, if it was written, that explains it. Well, well, I think it's you know, I think if you tried to write this from scratch now. You you would have to take account of the way the world has changed in terms of uh, the way women are regarded within it. I think you would have to you would have to include speeches that really just didn't exist back then. You know, there's a lot of soapbox uh, talking in films today, ah, especially yeah. if they try to make a point. And what I felt that I and I'm very pleased about. At no point did these women say, "I'm a strong woman." We have, you know, we we women right on. They just behave. They are strong. You take that out of it. You don't need to say it. You just illustrate it. They're really the type of girls I grew up with. And uh, you know, I come from a very strong female background. My mother and my sisters. Really, I was trying to make a film about my big sister and her pals, and who I thought were just magnificent at the time. So So you had an admiration for this type. Absolutely, of, yeah. absolutely. I, you know, they were wild and daft and crazy, and actually, they're now running Scotland. They're now they're, that generation is now the the political class of Scotland, right. yeah, for better or worse. I, I agree. I, uh, I I've always felt the same way too. Um, in fact, but when I think about the movies, I mean, you know, it's not your typical representation of, of uh, young women of this, no. this age, right? Well, you know, a lot of it was. I, I think a lot of the reason it didn't get picked up before was there's there's a lot of instances of the young girls owning their own sexuality. Mm. And I think that was somewhat threatening oh, to, yeah. to, to some men in the, in the film business. I made a decision not to make a moral judgment about anything these girls did in, as characters. They, they, you know, as long as it fell within the drama, it's fine. So I, I let them be what they were. And, and you, it's an unusual film in that way um, that, that you know, they don't apologize for anything they do all the way through it. And you accept it and you, you know, you still fall in love with them. They could be doing the most heinous things, but you still fall in love with them because you understand them and you understand where it's coming from. They talk about sex all the time, but it's not about sex. Sex is like a front that we all go through when we don't know enough about it. Oops, there's my telephone. Uh, That's all right. It's a good song, though. I'll just kill that one. It's a good song. It's a good ringtone, but yeah. Um, yeah, every time I hear that in a shop, I reach my phone. 
Uh, so, yeah, uh, you know, and really my, my object, you know, I'm a guy, so what do I know about young girls? But I knew plenty about uh, that environment. So my job was kind of to employ the girls to become more than actors, to be actually become part of the filmmaking process. Yeah. Uh, that, that you, you know, you, I rely on them to, to explain to me why this costume is better than that costume, how that reflects their character more. So I actually brought them into it, and by doing so, it gives it a... Uh, uh, reality that I couldn't do. You know, I'm, you're, I'm you're letting guy. them, in a sense, guide you a little bit. Yeah. Which no, is actually, they, they, they were educating me yeah, in many yeah. ways. You know, and, and I, you just have to be open for that. And because, yeah, I think I'm a better director now than I would have been 20 years ago. I would have yeah. said, "No, shut up. This is how you're doing it." But uh, you know, now I'm older. It was like, okay, that's interesting. Okay, and how would you do that? And what would that feel like? And okay, you know, you can bring it out. Yeah. And so I tried to create an atmosphere where everybody could kick stuff in, especially yeah. you know the, the girls. And you know, the, all the men in the film are less uh, threatening yeah. to the woman than they are just idiots. You know, that's my that my view. You know, that, that these girls are completely in control. Yeah. They are yeah. at no point in this film are they bothered by men yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like they can they can handle themselves and I kind of wanted to make a, a, a film where that was not even a question you know today yeah. everybody's worried about you know is that are they going to get in trouble is, is something bad going to happen to them but it, you know that is a relatively recent thing yeah. you know we've all got a lot more cautious and afraid because of it now, well, when you said exactly when you said um, uh, women taking charge of sexuality was seen as threatening back then, I, I still think it's kind of seen as, as threatening. Yeah, I don't understand it myself because, as I say, I come from a very uh, st strong female background. My mother, my sisters, they were very, you know, I was brought up to, you know, respect their intelligence and respect them. And, you know, I would have got killed yeah, yeah. by my mother if, if, I, if I hadn't, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, it's, it's also the way I... So I don't understand misogyny. Yeah, I yeah, know it's plenty yeah. of about, and we had came up against it making this, but I don't understand it myself. Yeah. Well, uh, just going back to the film, um, yeah, like we said, th that's the film does portray, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, women in charge of sexuality. Mm -hmm. That is not to say that it's only, you know, on the surface level of mm -hmm. film about, you know, maybe young girls just, you know, looking to have a good time. Yeah. I think there's also more to it than that, yes. just you know, beneath the surface. Well, you know, I, I always feel that you can make, you could, you can, and if if it's possible, you should make films that have uh, multiple layers. Mm -hmm. You know, on one level, it's just a bunch of girls going out, getting drunk and swearing, and and going away on the on the lash for a day. But within that, there are there are serious things that are going on yeah. uh, to each an in, a, individual. Someone's suffered a bereavement, one's had been sick, the other one's confused about their sexuality, one's losing their best friend. There are all different le levels and layers going on. But if you don't get all that, that's okay. You should still get that layer on the top, yeah. you know. So for me, what was gratifying about showing the film was that not only did the audience get all that, they got all the little bits and pieces connecting that, that we had hoped for, and it was just a, a magnificent uh, uh, reaction to the film, right. uh, and I wasn't really aware and ready for it. Do you think that the way, it, you know, the reason they reacted that way is because uh, we're getting more, you know, understanding of things with the times? or? Well, I, I think it's also that, um, you know, people are looking for something authentic, no, you know, there's so much plastic in the world. You know, we've gone through a whole cycle of um, the dominant film series being kind of Marvel and superheroes and what have you. And they, they, this happens in times of uh, turmoil in the world where you, where, where what the culture tends to do is, is provide escapism. Yeah. You know, so there's been a lot of staying away from reality or the reality has been couched in miserable terms. Here, I wanted to try and uh, make something that, w w that was natural and real and applicable to people's lives but to do it in a way that gave it that elevated it you know like a hollywood treatment of a normal situation yeah. rather than a fantastic hollywood treatment about a different world you know right so i think there's a there's a great desire for authenticity in the world and i think that's what this film provides well uh with that uh, i thank you very much for joining us it was a fascinating yeah. chat and a great great <laughs> film really thank you very much thanks a lot and this is fred film radio the festival insider